On August 12th, 2022, news broke that Fernando Tatis Jr., El Nino, the face of the MLB, had been suspended 80 games after testing positive for PEDs. By far the most consequential suspension since Alex Rodriguez, the news shook the baseball world to its very core. But it hit Padres fans worse. Way worse. They'd watched Tatis Jr. grow up. They'd loved him. They'd defended him. In return, Fernando Tatis Jr. had done everything Padres fans could ask. He'd performed on the field. He'd brought the team back to relevance. Most of all, he'd rekindled a joy for baseball gone for years in San Diego. Then, just like that, he took it all away. Whatever you believe about Tatis Jr.'s suspension, about his guilt or innocence, there's one thing no one can deny. Fernando Tatis Jr. has provided us with an absolutely textbook example of how to turn an entire fan base against you, and in just four simple steps. Step one, make them love you. Everyone knows Padres fans love Fernando Tatis Jr., or at least loved him until recently. But if we're gonna understand this story, we need to understand why Tatis Jr. meant so much to the franchise, and by extension, why his fall from grace hit the Padres faithful so hard. So let's backtrack. And for those of us who aren't Padres fans, let's put ourselves in their shoes. The date is August 6th. The year is 2014. You're a diehard Padres fan, deeply disillusioned, struggling to keep tabs on the dregs of another disappointing season. The future looked bright just a few years back, when your Padres posted four straight winning campaigns from 2004 to 2007. But since 2008, the men in brown have finished under 500 every season but one. And it's about to happen again. But wait, there's hope. Having pledged to turn over a new leaf, Padres ownership brings in Wonderkind general manager AJ Preller, the Cornell grad and talent acquisition specialist who is essential to converting the Texas Rangers from early 2000s laughing stocks to back-to-back -back AL champions in 2010 and 2011. And the good news keeps coming. In his first offseason, Preller's dizzying slew of trades and free agent signings earns him the nickname the Rockstar GM and refits your beloved Pods roster on both sides of the ball. From big name outfielders Justin and BJ Upton, Matt Kemp and Will Myers, to veteran hurlers Craig Kimball and James Shields. Before you know it, the 2015 season is underway, and the results are terrible. Equipped with the roster chock full of bloated salaries and bad defenders playing out of position, your Padres are so bad in 2015 that by the following offseason, they're one step removed from a full on Marlins fire sale. You watch Preller deal Kimbrel to the Red Sox. Watch him let Justin Upton walk in free agency. You even watch Preller trade James Shields, the same James Shields he signed to a four year deal just one season earlier, to the White Sox for a pair of minor leaguers, who, like all minor leaguers, you've never really heard of. Now, fast forward. As expected, the Padres have been absolutely atrocious since Preller's fire sale, posting fourth or worst place in the NL West from 2016 through 2018. But just like in 2014, there's hope. And this time, it's real. Preller, to his credit, learned from his mistakes. And though the transactions that earned him the Rockstar GM nickname were disastrous, his subsequent string of moves are starting to pan out. One move in particular. Remember when I said James Shields went to the White Sox for a pair of minor leaguers you've never heard of? Well, you've heard of one of them now, a 19-year-old shortstop by the name of Fernando Tatis Jr. And Tatis Jr. is seriously good. The son of a former major leaguer of, well, almost the same name, Tatis Jr. had reaped all the benefits of a childhood in the baseball-obsessed Dominican Republic, while also enjoying the advantages of a privileged upbringing and education. Practically since he could walk, El Nino had been groomed for stardom, mentored by MLB All-Star and off-season neighbor Robinson Cano, not to mention his father. Tatis Jr. had been coached in how to handle fame almost as well as how to play baseball. He's an instant fam favorite, always smiling, always laughing, always busting it down the line, always saying the right thing in interviews about the responsibility of being a role model. And, well, Tatis Jr. is incredibly talented, as in the most talented player you've ever seen. Somehow, he's even more fun to watch. For the Padres faithful, 2019 is the dawn of a new era. Tatis Jr. will at last debut as the everyday shortstop. Four-time All-Star third baseman Manny Machado has signed on a $300 million deal that will keep him in Brown for the next 10 years. Nothing can go wrong. Well, nothing besides your phenom rookie shortstop missing half the season to injury, which Tatis Jr. does. But that's okay. Sure, your pods post another losing record in 2019, but Tatis Jr. was out half the year, and Machado was acclimating to Petco Park, and the Padres' payroll was seventh lowest in the majors. What matters is next year. Next year, Preller is pledged to spend big. Next year, Fernando Tatis Jr. will be back, and even though he missed half his rookie season, anyone who watched the games know the Padres now have, at long last, found the superstar who will bring them to the promised land. And you don't need to take anyone's word on that. 
Just look at the numbers. Despite playing only 84 games, Tatis Jr. finished third in Rookie of the Year voting. He posted a staggering OPS of 969, a 317 batting average, raked 22 home runs, and swiped 16 bases. If those paces had been maintained across an injury-free season, Tatis Jr. would have hit 42 home runs and stolen 30 bases. As a rookie shortstop. No doubt about it. 2020 is the Padres' year. Nothing can go wrong. Well, nothing besides the world being engulfed in a once-in-a-century pandemic that throws your life in a shambles, not to mention shortening the season by 102 games, depriving you of 102 opportunities to watch Tatis Jr. and your Padres light up the league. Nothing besides your Padres sharing a division with a Dodger squad that just so happens to be one of the best in MLB history, a World Series destined juggernaut that somehow finishes the 60 game season with 43 wins, puts your Padres sterling 37-23 record to shame. Okay, so I guess a few things could go wrong, and do, but let's look at the positives. Even in a COVID shortened season, the Padres 37-23 record is phenomenal. And so was Tatis Jr. At 20 years old, playing just 59 games, your second year shortstop hit 17 home runs, a pace that would translate to 47 across the full season. With a 939 OPS, El Nino finished fourth in MVP voting and won his first silver slugger. Better still, Tatis Jr. did it while being so damn lovable. His home run pimping, unwritten rule ignoring, fun embracing style of play has brought joy to San Diego. He's made you and every other Padres fan love him. He's made you remember why you love baseball. And baseball fans love him too. Tatis Jr. has tapped for the cover of MLB The Show 21. He signs a massive deal with Adidas and Gatorade and T-Mobile and just about everyone else. Nope, there's no denying Fernando Tatis Jr. is the new face of baseball. And not only is he your face, he's going to stay your face. Preller just locked him up for 14 years to the tune of $340 million. 2021 will be the Padres' year. The future isn't just bright in San Diego, it's never been brighter. Step two, make them defend you. The good times keep rolling when Preller stays true to his word and opens up the checkbook. Heading into Tatis Jr.'s third season, your Padres are fielding a $178 million payroll that's eighth highest in the league. The roster is stacked. Tatis Jr. is healthy. It's World Series or bust. Which, unfortunately, turns out to mean bust. Despite Tatis Jr. living up to his expectations with a massive 2021 campaign that includes a league-leading 42 homers, career-high 975 OPS, his first All-Star appearance, and a third-place finish in MVP voting, your World Series or bust Padres somehow become literally the worst team in the MLB on August 12th, closing out the season on a nightmarish 12-34 run that gift wraps the Cardinals the NL's second wildcard berth. You're crushed, confused, incensed, but you still love Fernando Tatis Jr., and so do the rest of the Padres faithful. But that doesn't necessarily mean all of the Padres themselves. As Tatis Jr.'s celebrity has taken off, so have his on-field antics. Then again, El Nino plays hard, and opposing pitchers offended by his home run pimping are generally met with eye rolls, written off as relics of the dreary, no-fun era of baseball that's finally on its way out. Tatis Jr. is a diamond in baseball's rough, an unapologetic, fun-loving superstar that you and the full Padres fandom are proud to support even if that means supporting Tatis Jr. against his own teammates. Which is exactly what you do when this clip of Machado and Tatis Jr. goes viral in September, forcing you to pick sides. But there never was any real question about which side you'd pick. Manny Machado is a superstar, but he's not a superstar in the same way Fernando Tatis Jr. is a superstar. Manny Machado is not a homegrown talent. Most importantly, Manny Machado has spent years earning his well-known reputation as a baseball villain. And everyone loves Fernando Tatis Jr., at least every Padres fan like you, so you keep defending him, even if you are a bit less adamant when you learn what Machado's beef was all about. Dissecting the clip, you come to understand what Machado was angry with Tatis Jr. for, showing up an umpire who called him on the strikes. Why does this upset Machado? Because as Manny is happy to point out, Tatis Jr. is the best player in the world. But the game is not all about him. The Padres are facing off against the Cardinals, with whom they're locked in a razor-sharp wildcard race at, at this point. If Tatis Jr. shows up the umpire, he might get thrown out. If Tatis Jr. gets thrown out, the Padres are more likely to lose. That's why Manny is mad. And he's right to be. But who cares? You still love El Nino better. You still defend him. Mostly though, you try to forget the dugout incident ever happened. Which, conveniently, is exactly the attitude of Padres management. Machado and Tatis Jr. quickly address their argument in a joint interview. Step 3. Fool them once. Okay, so by this point there's an argument to be made that Tatis Jr. already has fooled you once. But no, you're chalking up the Machado thing to a learning experience. El Nino is a clean slate. Or, he did at least. Right up until your $340 million shortstop showed up to 2022 spring training with the wrist injury he'd sustained in an off-season motorcycle accident. 
right up until you saw this. When was the accident? Which one? The motorcycle accident. Uh, when, you, when the reporters were reporting. Which was it? J January, December? That day, yeah. That, in case there was any question, was a reporter asking Tatish Jr. when the motorcycle accident that injured his wrist occurred. That is Tatish Jr. replying by asking, which one? As in, which motorcycle accident? As in, there was more than one motorcycle accident. By the time it's announced Tatish Jr. will miss months of the 2022 season, you're fuming, and you're not defending him anymore. Step four, fool him twice. Okay, so now we've got one argument with Manny Machado where Machado, against all odds, came across as the good guy. And we've got two, at the least, off-season motorcycle accidents that have eliminated at least half of Tatis Jr.'s 2022 season. Sure sounds like he's fooled you more than twice by now, but again, you're chalking it up as a learning experience. What did Tatis Jr. learn? Irrelevant. But that's how you're chalking it up. And the silver lining is Tatis Jr. is back in San Diego. He's rehabbing with team doctors, busting his ass to get back on the field. Sure, he burned through more goodwill with the which one comment than most people earn in a lifetime, but he's also done an awful lot for the franchise. I mean... Not in terms of like winning or avoiding utter humiliation, but El Nino's OPS has been over 900 every single year. All he's got to do is keep his head down, put in the work, get back on the field as soon as he can, and... Kevin, the 80-game suspension is perhaps the biggest Major League Baseball has seen in terms of name since Alex Rodriguez was suspended, and the fact that Fernando Tatis Jr. Okay, so that happened. But it can't be true, right? I mean, there's no way Fernando Tatis Jr. really cheated, right? Well, it depends on who you ask. For example, if you ask Fernando Tatis Jr. or Fernando Tatis Sr. or a close friend of the Tatis family like Robinson Cano, the same Robinson Cano that mentored Tatis Jr. as a child, the same Robinson Cano who was twice suspended for PEDs, including a 162-game ban just two years earlier. Yes, if you ask any of those people whether Fernando Tatis Jr. cheated, you'll be happy to learn the whole ordeal is one great big misunderstanding, that the answer is no. But if you ask, for example, anyone else, then yes. Fernando Tatis Jr. cheated. But you're not asking anyone. You're gonna find the facts, then you're gonna make your own decision. So you find the facts, and here they are. Fact one, at some point before August 12th, 2022, Fernando Tatis Jr. tested positive for Costaval, a steroid on the MLB's banned substance list. Fact two, Tatis Jr. originally appealed the suspension as he continued his rehab assignment, but ultimately dropped the appeal, leading to the August 12th announcement of his suspension. Fact three, the product of a state-sponsored Soviet-era doping program in East Germany, Klostobol, which mimics the muscle-building steroid our bodies naturally produce, was specifically designed to help cheating athletes beat drug tests in international competition. A progeny of that very state-sponsored doping program, by the way, continues to exist in Russia, and is the reason Russian flags have been banned from the Olympics since 2018. But that's another story. Fact four, there are dozens of newer, more effective, more difficult to detect steroids that Tatis Jr. could have taken instead of taking Clostebol. Fact five, this is where it gets interesting. According to Fernando Tatis Sr., Fernando Tatis Jr. took Clostebol to treat an infection for a ringworm. Tatis Jr. obtained the drug in the Dominican Republic where it's legal and did not realize it was on the banned substance list. Fact five, it's just about impossible to disprove the ringworm story, as Clostebol really is legal in the DR, and there are at least some Dominican doctors who prescribe it for ringworm, though most don't. Fact seven, whether or not Fernando Tatis Jr. knowingly ingested Clostebol in the interest of bettering his performance as a baseball player, it's very weird, frankly very stupid, and very sad that he took it at all, which he did. All right, enough facts. The question is, where does that information leave you, our tormented, ever faithful Padres fanatic? The answer, they leave you with one choice, except reality. And the reality is that Fernando Tatis Jr. has let you down. He earned your love, he earned your trust, and then he abused them both. And not just once, he abused them over and over. Sure, Tatis Jr. has apologized repeatedly for letting his teammates down, but his teammates aren't accepting that, and neither should you. Fernando Tatis Jr. suspended, effective immediately for taking a performance-enhancing substance. 80 games is the- They're not accepting it because one thing Tatis Jr. hasn't done is accept responsibility. Through all his apologies, he's maintained that he took Clostebol to treat ringworm, which maddeningly distracts the discussion from what it should be. And that's that it doesn't matter why El Nino ingested a banned substance. It only matters that he did. If Tatis Jr. took Clostebol because he wanted to boost his performance, he's a cheater, a liar, and an idiot for taking such an easy-to-detect drug. 
If he took Claus to Wall to treat Ringworm, Tatis Jr. was recklessly gambling with the Padres' future because every major leaguer, and certainly every major leaguer who holds the weight of a franchise on his shoulders, has it drilled into his head time and time again that before you take any new medication, the team doctor must be consulted. The Padres' team doctor was not. Maybe one day Tatis Jr. will win back the support of his fans. Maybe one day he'll win back the support of his teammates. He won't do it by skirting blame. He won't do it by pimping home runs. He'll do it by growing up. And for better or worse, you'll be watching. You're a Padres fan after all. And Tatis Jr. might have turned you and every other Padres fan against him, but he hasn't turned you against the boys in brown, who, of course, have still got him under contract for 12 more years. The upside? Americans love a good redemption arc. Baseball fans love a good redemption arc. And while Fernando Tatis Jr. might be at the bottom of his arc now, he's got plenty of time to climb back up. Thank you guys for watching, and I hope you enjoyed the video. Subscribe for more content like this all year long, and I'll see you in the next one. Have a great day, guys.